My name is Jeremiah Ferwerda. I'm here at the 2020 Energy Science and Technology Conference presenting, and I presented the Thermal Dynamic Transformer by Nikola Tesla. Um, I wanted a way to transform heat into energy because we have so many heat sources in, on the planet, on this planet. Um, we've got solar, we've got stuff that we can burn, um, we are, our fireplace. I, I wanted to find a, fire, a way to transform the energy from my fireplace efficiently in, into energy and that's what got me started. Um, and because we, we've got the, a lot of people have a wood stove at home and they burn firewood and, and uh, I was like why can't, there's so much energy coming off that wood stove, why can't we transform that into electrical energy? Why do we have to buy a generator with uh, a thousand parts, a thousand moving parts that we constantly have to replace and we can only run it on one fuel, gasoline? We, with this system, we can run it on any fuel, anything that, that, is, is, that produces heat, um, including the sun. And there's something interesting. There's, uh, there is uh, solar heat tubes that people claim are 97% efficient, but they've actually tested it and gotten over 50% efficiency results from or gathering the energy from the sun. And, uh, and the problem is nobody can u turn that into electricity. You need a turbine, but you also need a very efficient turbine. And we wanted, we, we started with the bladeless Tesla turbine because of its simplicity of design and um, the simplicity of the de design, its efficiency, and how long it will last. Um, this, this technology, or well, you can power your home, that's the biggest practical solution. In the future, we'll be, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be running uh, like cars and boats and planes and stuff. Just anything that you can, anything that, that needs power to run, this will run it. I've always loved science, I've always loved doing experiments. And my dad got me interested when I was real young and taking things apart and seeing how they work. And I started taking everything apart uh, as I was growing up and, and doing my own experience, experiments. And um, I wanted to eventually, I knew I, knew a, I wanted to eventually start using the uh, experiments and, and producing technology in the future sometime. And, um, once I got settled down and I started just really focusing on producing a usable uh, device, um, I, I stuck with it. I wanted to finish it, and I finished it. So, yeah, it was my dad getting me into getting sparking my curiosity and taking stuff apart that really got me into this kind of of what I'm doing here today. I showed a demonstration of this very a very basic demonstration without a generator and Aaron Murakami he uh, noticed or he saw the YouTube video and got in contact with me and invited me to come up to the conference um, and uh, yeah I was pretty everything was pretty basic at that point but he gave me a booth and let me share share the idea with people and it started off with just an idea and then turned into something real and something that's usable um, and that's where, where, where we're at today. I presented last year, it was my first presentation. I was really nervous and my demonstration didn't work so um, it wasn't the best presentation but I was less nervous this year and I was a little more prepared and I have a working system so I was more confident and um, so yeah I, I did better on this this presentation than last year and uh, Aaron just was kind enough to let me present at his conference. Gave me a lot of confidence that, that somebody wanted me to, to present at their conference too. And so that actually, that gave me a lot of strength and a lot of, I, so that I could pursue it and I could believe in myself having all, so many people believe in me as, as well. It was really nice. We have, uh, we have iEnergySupply.com. Um, that's our, our website. Uh, this is our business name. You can type this in on YouTube and you can see our project. Um, we've, we've also got, and if you want to check out all of Aaron, Aaron's stuff, it's emediapress.com. Is that, is that correct? emediapress.com. Um, it'll show my presentation and it'll show our demonstration. Um, 
th this demonstration and you can purchase that from from Aaron Morkami and I'll also be putting some of that material out on my my uh, patreon um, and so patreon.com slash I energy supply is uh, is where you can find that yeah basically you have a boiler and a condenser and it's basically like a distillery you heat one side up and then the water slash alcohol evaporates and then moves into the cold side or the condenser and if you put a turbine in between there you can extract the energy from the the movement of the fluid from the cold the hot side to your cold side so we extract all the ambient air out of the out of the system so that there's just water vapor in the system. In fact, you, we create a new atmosphere of just water vapor in, in the system. And what that allows us to do, on our, on our hot side, we've got, we've got vacuum, but less vacuum. So there's a lower pressure in the, hot, in the condenser than in the boiler. So this box right here is under vacuum right now. And, and it's about 28 inches of mercury, or 13.5 psi, 13.17 psi right now, or minus 13.7 psi, or 30 inches of mercury. So this this has every square inch here has almost 14 pounds of pressure. It's got 13 pounds of pressure on every square inch. So if you were to puncture this box, it would suck in a bunch of air. Or a, a better way to think of it is the atmospheric pressure pushing down on it would push its way in into the box very rapidly. So having the whole turbine under a vacuum makes it so that there's less friction from ambient air. Ambient air, 14.7 psi, when you run a regular turbine, um, plugs up the turbine. It it's like having a bunch of a bunch of like it's like having a NASCAR race with a bunch of rocks and gravel in the road on the track. If you get rid of all that, you can go much faster. And that's basically the principle here. The the pressure comes through into our nozzle and then has is forced to spiral around in a track, in a circular track. But because we've we've gotten rid of all the atmospheric pressure, um, there's nothing in the way. So the velocity of the particles can go way way higher. And there's no friction, um, there's no added friction from the um, atmosphere to slow your turbine down and no matter how fast it's going so at these very we're using very low temperatures and very low pressures um, and just water vapor to run run the system um, having very low temp in order to extract energy efficiently with very low temperatures and very low pressures you you need to have a um, you need to have a very high speed unit. So the operating speed of this turbine is 150,000 RPMs. And the rotor is a three inch rotor, which means at 150,000 RPMs, we're going Mach 1.7 or 1,400 um, miles an hour. And that's the periphery. Every time it rotates one time, it rotates about 13 inches, but it does that 50,000 times per minute and that equals a periphery speed of 1,400 miles per hour. So if you're pushing with one, one pound of weight, um, going 1,500 miles an hour, there's an extreme amount of energy there, even though the pressure is so low and the, temp and the temperatures are so low. So normally to run a steam engine, you need, you need high pressure and very high temperature to efficiently run the turbine. But in this case, we don't need high pressure and high temperature because we got high speed. Yeah, 150,000 RPM will be the operating speed. We've already achieved that. We don't want to achieve that right where we don't want to push it that high right now because we want our analytical equipment that we'll, we'll be getting very shortly. Um, and that will show the pressure, the temperature, the RPM, the volts, the, watt, the amps, the watts, the humidity in the condenser, the humidity in the boiler. Um, and it'll, it'll, we, we want to be able to extract every last bit of information from it. So we're just running this at really low speeds right now um, for the, and very low temperatures for the demonstration. We, it's, it's renewable energy that is economical. Um, so you can power your home with it. And you can power it with, with uh, and the biggest, the biggest 
difference between this system and a regular solar system is we could store our energy in water. So one lead acid ba battery is nearly equal to one gallon of water. So instead of having to spend thousands of dollars on batteries and replacing them every four to eight years, um, which costs a fortune if you want to store enough energy to run your home comfortably, we can do that with water. And so how, how much does a gallon of water cost? And, and uh, I mean, a gallon of water costs I mean, next to nothing, the water, water is everywhere. And all we have to do is have a large tank to store that water and then heat that water up. Oh, I've been following Eric Dollard for so long and he's been one of my idols. Um, I, I don't know if, it, if you would, uh, I look up to him and I love that he is so enthusiastic and, and has been working on Tesla's technology for so long. And for him to, to like my project is just, is just awesome.